Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derber with my wife of 34 years of marriage today, Alberta Derber. And we're just delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 1, 37 says, For with God, nothing is impossible. Hun? 34. We couldn't even stay together 34 minutes before. Oh, no way. How many times did we separate? How many times did we... Huh, even when we were together, we were separated. You know, it's... But, you know, hon... You had an insight to God way beyond. I can remember we were living in the Kwajalein, uh in the Marshall Islands, and I remember right where we were walking down that road towards the lagoon, and you said, God sent you to me. And I looked at you and I said, <laughs> if you think God sent me to, to you, you are crazy. And, but, but even in our craziness, you were drawing to God, I was still running. And uh, I don't know other than divine providence and and uh, our parents praying for us, and of course, Howard Rumberg interceding for me, that would bring us together. And, you know, I God was. God had to put us all the way out in the middle of nowhere on a seven and a half mile island with nothing but water around us. Yeah, but I was a, I was, I was a jerk to you. I mean, I, I know. I, well, you know, I, that's why I said that's what's so, that's what's so um, astounding. Uh, yeah, and miraculous because when you said, more than likely, when I leave this island, mm -hmm. I'm going to go alone. Ninety nine and nine tenths percent. That's what I told you. And I loved living on Kwajalein, especially. Mm -hmm. See, I had gotten born again watching. Uh, uh, 700 Club, I think it was, mm -hmm. when I was in Hawaii because I was on a TV. pinnacle. Yeah. And, and, um, and, but I didn't know what any of that meant. Even all the stuff they said, it was like, it just, you know, it wasn't it, mm -hmm. you know. But God got my attention. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when you said, you know, as far as I was concerned, gladly, you know, I'd stay on that island. You know what, huh? It, what, what just leaped up inside of me. There's people that have been watching this that they're searching and they don't even know why they keep coming back to this program mm. because they got so much wrong in their life. Mm. But yet there's a drawing. Father God's drawing on them. And they want what we have, and what we're teaching, but they don't think there's any way. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, God knows how to draw you to himself. Just yield. Just, just say, okay. I mean, a simple prayer like, okay, God, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. And we got married under a, a contract marriage. And because if we were married, then we would have housing instead of living in a little dorm apartment. And uh, we bought that farm together in, here in, in Kentucky. And when I left, I went up to you and said, hey, if you want to come, come. And, and just walked right on past you. And next thing I know, you said, yeah, well, let's go. Yeah, that's what that's what's so astounding. I mean, there's no way, no way. First of all, we never got along mm -hmm. out out there, and I loved Kwajalein. Mm -hmm. I loved living that island. I loved walking every morning, and it was a and, safe haven. Oh you. my, my, mm -hmm. and and you know, island. I mean, I loved everything about it. Mm -hmm. But 
Mm -hmm. We got born again. I got a picture in there in my desk of you on our covenant marriage. Wrote that song, Covenant Woman, Covenant Man. The only time I, I think I ever sung it was at that wedding for you to surprise you because I knew how belittling it must have been for you to marry me under the circumstances. And I vowed that day, I'm going to be a husband to you. I'm going to, uh, I remember when God said, I've given her to you as a gift from me and she better return to me better than I gave her to you. And I just want, I just want you to know, thank you. I love you and grateful, grateful for you seeing something that I couldn't see and, and, and come to find out you're a seer. And here we are, 32 years I in marriage in heaven. Any, I never saw any of this. How many, how many, how many marriages now <laughs> have we counseled that well, everybody, everybody on, on well, to be truthful, everybody on our staff has had marriage counseling. That doesn't mean something's wrong. You just need some wisdom in an area. Yeah. But yeah. we were able to give them that wisdom. Only from God. Only from God. Only so way. happy anniversary. Thank you, honey. I, I love, love you. you too. I love you too. And I'm very grateful. Mrs. Derber. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember when, when yeah, uh, I you my got- my first Bible. I put Alberta, Franchi, Derber. Franchi being your maiden yeah. name, Italian name. But you know, it's, that was, well, but but it was important because God came to you, and not that you can't have a, uh, you can't keep your maiden name. A lot of people do that. A lot of ladies do that. But God came to you and said, "Now you a Derber now." Yeah, the thing is that it, the secret to um, having a successful marriage is um, having fellowship with God. You know, and I discovered that. My um, happiness doesn't come from my husband. Mm. You know, and God told me, Alberta, you can't depend on him to make you happy. Mm. Oh, wow. You mm -hmm. know, because so many um, marriages, so many uh, people think that, you know, well, they're miserable because something their husband did or their wife did. But you know, you have to take everything to the Lord. And when you have a relationship, or more than relationship, a fellowship with God Almighty, and and you start, <laughs> I mean, when you start talking to God every day and being with the Lord every day, I mean, there's no way, you know, I'd get smart with you or you get mm -hmm. smart with me and I'm like. Well, you remember out at the farm when the Lord was teaching us to pray? He said, Philip, you get up at 3 o'clock. I bet you get up at 4 o'clock. Remember that? Well, I'm getting up at 3 o'clock, struggling, falling asleep. You ain't getting up. And, I, and I'd get on you. I'd say, hey, yeah. 4 o'clock. And I'd go in there and shake you. And you'd say, leave me alone. And so on and so forth. We were just babies. Yeah. After about, I don't know, three or four mornings of that, the Lord said, what are you doing? I said, she's supposed to be getting up. I'm getting up. She ain't getting up, right? He said, won't you let me handle it? Now, I'm about to learn a husband truth. I said, how are you going to handle it? Go in there, stand beside her while she's asleep. Don't get loud. Don't say nothing to her. And just ask me to wake her up. And then when she starts to wake up, get at her. It's a true story. I went in there, stood beside your bed, and you're asleep. It's four o'clock. I said, Father God, in Jesus' name, wake Alberta up. Immediately, immediately, you started stretching. I got out of there, and the next thing, no, here you come walking out of the bedroom, and you've been doing it ever since. And I said, okay. As a husband, it's not for me to tell you this, tell you that. 
But you know, there's things as a head. But we've gone, we've gone through a lot of that. Just, just learning. I mean, you just have to learn. You know, it's a, it, it's not, <laughs> not what you want. Many times, God said, "You know, Alberta. It doesn't matter. It's not Philip that's right, or you that's right." He said, "The only one right in this deal is him." Yeah. No matter what you think or what you think. Well, I learned I learned this in 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 uh, marriage counseling. You know, the world says there's there's two sides to everything. No, there ain't. There's three sides. <laughs> Three, Cause, exactly. Because the man can be wrong, the husband can be wrong, and the wife can be wrong. Both of them wrong. Let's get God's side in on us. You and have I, to. I remember you made me mad the first time you told me this, when you were trying to get me to do something. And uh, God told you, uh, Alberta, if he won't obey me. <laughs> he don't want to listen to me. Why, why do you think he's going to listen to you? <laughs> Boy, that just went, Right. Well, let's jump into this. Yeah, we're all over this. Uh, August 28th, huh? Wow. Wow. Okay. This is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Shipwrecked faith. Father God never intended for his children to shipwreck, but rather to pass over to the other side. Thank you, Lord. Faith and a good conscience are necessary to make it. The devil knows that a guilty conscience will shipwreck your faith. Oh, my. I don't even know how you get started, you know. Mm. Imagine faith as the ship and a good conscience as the sail. A ship without a sail is at as is at the mercy of the sea. Excuse me. The ship will go in whatever direction that the waves are going. It could be that the waves are headed towards a dangerous rocky shore or just in the wrong direction. But with a sail, a ship master can catch the wind and take his ship to its destination. A good conscience can only come from a born-again believer who knows he has been washed in the blood of Jesus and made righteous. The devil tries to keep a believer from knowing that, or it tempts a believer with some kind of disobedience, defiling his conscience and weakening his faith. Thank God for forgiveness. If you have done something contrary to God's word, and you have a guilty conscience about what you did, your sail is not up on your faith ship. Don't waste another minute being tossed to and fro by the sea. Confess that sin to Father God. Awake to righteousness and set your sail for the other side. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now we see right there how righteousness and faith work together. Oh yeah. Because because your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Your spirit is your righteous new man. And so if the enemy can have any kind of access try to get you and I deceived or, or even uh, doing something goofy that makes our conscience uh, not right. Thank God, uh, your Sorry. conscience. Oh, your conscience is a is a an alarm system when when conviction comes. Conviction can come uh, not to do something, or conviction can come to do something. We call conviction to do something confirmation yeah but uh, it's really a convicting force of the Holy Ghost letting you know pushing you over saying yes this is me do that and so uh, shipwreck faith there's there's not a problem with the faith there's a problem with the conscience and 
So how many people have launched out mm-hmm. going to the other side, yeah. and they got the faith to do it? Yeah. And here comes the devil mm-hmm. just plaguing them in their conscience, just uh, trying to remind them of mm. something they did in their past or something they may have even done uh, yesterday. But this is the power of forgiveness. And, and uh, when you walk in your righteousness, to walk in your right, oh, thank you, Lord. To walk in your righteousness, you walk in, for, in, in forgiveness. You just, you just, you, you walk in a state of always being ready to ask God to forgive you quick. Years ago, the Lord spoke to me in prayer and he said, Philip, you know what I like about you? Well, I was getting my list out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I pray a lot, I fast, I, I preach wherever you send me. And before I could get my list out, he said, you're quick to repent. <laughs> that, that wouldn't even been on my list. But see, that protects the anointing. That oh, yeah. helps my faith keep moving in direction to manifest. Quick to repent. Now, Admitting is part of submitting. When you submit to God, then you have to admit Mm -hmm. to God in areas that you are straying, in areas that uh, he points out to you. And when you walk, have a life of forgiveness, in other words, a life of when God shows you, for him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And when, when you get in front of God and you say, God, I see that. I confess my sin. I see my shortcoming. I see my failure there. And I'm asking you to forgive me. And I believe I received that right now. Now, this is the power of righteousness. This is a power to having your conscience purged. Now, the devil will try to... Try to uh, Uh, in your soul, try to make you carry regret. Well, why did you, I can't believe I did that. Now you're kicking yourself. I can't believe I did that. How many times? But down here is where you need to look. Right down here, your conscience has been cleared. Hmm. See? And up here, you have to have your mind renewed. And here's where faith comes in. No, I confessed it. He is faithful. I trust in God's faithfulness to forgive me for that. And by faith, it don't make no difference how I feel. I received that. My conscience (laughs) right here, I ain't talking about up here. You can still be sitting there saying, man. Mm -hmm. What what, what, what ought to happen is you get a a level of anger at yourself, not not to where you're Right, belittling yourself, yeah, right. but where you say, you know what, I'm gonna get this right. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this right. A determination. But right here is just a prime example. There's nothing wrong with the ship. No. It doesn't have the sail up. And so faith is out there. It launched out. It got going. But because the sail's not there, it's all of a sudden at the mercy of what's what's tossing it and and it's throwing you off direction. So God made a way through the blood of Jesus. Thank you. The Bible says the blood of bulls and goats could not purge the conscience. Thank you, Jesus. See, but you and I, I mean, that springboard verse there is just powerful. Holding faith and a good conscience. Note, notice that holding in, in that springboard verse is the implied subject. So you get to read it, holding faith and holding a good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. See? And so uh, that shows you the area that the devil's going to try to invade. He's going to try to get you and I into some sort of uh, regret, Mm -hmm. 
some sort of, uh, man, why'd I do that when it's forgiven? As far as the east is from the west. See, this is the power. This, this is the power of God. Faithful is he that called us who also do it. It says in 1 John, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Yep. And, you know, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. See? And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And yeah. if we know that he hears us, we know yeah, that we, we have, have the it. petitions. Yeah which we desired of him. Well, what would block that is thinking he ain't hurt right. or having something. Uh, you know, I wrote a book, I, I think it's entitled Blessing Blockers. What blocks blessings? A to Z, I think, is the, the blessing blockers, right? And those of you watching, if you, 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 want, you want to check that book out, I mean, that's an eye opener, yeah. right? But right here, we're talking about having a good conscience. They put it away. Shipwreck. God never intended for you and I to launch out into the deep. Yeah, and shipwreck. And shipwreck. See, we were, you know, when we were in the islands, we were talking about earlier, uh, the scuba divers would go out where all those shipwreck, those those ships are wrecked. Remember, yeah, hun? Yeah. And they would dive around, and they they were wrecked from World War II yeah. and so on and so forth. You could still see some of the masts sticking over the water, when, and, and you know. And but there was others, I think I think it was called the Prince Oregon or something like that, over by Carlson Island, that the, that was a favorite for them to dive on. All these years, right? Jesus. And they're and they're looking at a <clears throat> vessel that never made it. Yeah. Wow. Never made it. Never made it to the other side. And uh, you know, you see Peter and them coming to Jesus, Jesus asleep in the boat. Carest thou not that we perish? Well, I guarantee you, they'd gone down the list of why they were perishing. Well, we didn't do this right. We didn't do that right. But Jesus stood up in his righteousness. He stood up in a good conscience. And he says this, Alberta. He says this. How is it that you ain't got no faith? My. How is it that you have no faith? And he speaks out of that good conscience. He speaks out of faith and commands the storm, mm -hmm. peace be still, and they go to the other side. Oh my God. How many people wow. have obeyed God in faith mm -hmm. and their faith is genuinely working mm -hmm. and the enemy comes in just the attacking their soul yeah. to Shh. get to their, somehow, to, to get their conscience. And see, that's why, that, you know, we, we say it all the time, that daily relationship with God yeah, is so sad. vital because the Bible says, examine yourself whether you be in the in faith. faith. Well, that, 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 that means, am I, am I putting action to my faith? But God will examine you about, you shouldn't have said that right. like you said. Oh, you shouldn't. Have, you should. You, you know. You should have. You should have done this instead of that. And and what what is he doing? He's he's teaching us how to walk like he would walk, but he's using our conscience. And so what we do is we say, Lord, forgive us for that, and uh, I'm going to learn to walk in that. Right. And boom, your conscience clears up. And then when you're when you have that situation arise again and you do it like God said to do it, even if the reaction from the other person or the situation is not desirable, they might they might cuss you out. But you have a good conscience. See? Those of you watching wow. by television, uh time is just Yeah, when you get when you get yeah, well, it's good. Uh, right, your good conscience only comes from understanding your new creation reality. And the more you uh, examine God's truths, the more this will become real to you. There may be some things that I'm saying 
to you that you're not quite comprehending yet. That's okay. That's okay. You take uh, what you are comprehending. God only holds us accountable for what we do understand. And uh, if you want your own copy of Awake to Righteousness, uh, certainly uh, you can contact our office and get a copy of that. But I just feel like there's somebody out there you're having marriage difficulty. And I wrote a book called Marriage Made in Heaven. And if you'll contact our office, we'll... Uh, they'll tell you how you can get that copy. It will it will radically change your marriage. Absolutely. If you really want your marriage changed. Absolutely. And happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We spent half the time talking, talking about, about that. But that's important. It is. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says this, Where the word of a king is, there, there is power. power. Be a blessing. Awake to Righteousness with a daily devotional by Drs. Philip and Alberta Derber. In this powerful devotional, you'll learn the different aspects of the righteousness or right standing that Jesus has provided. Get the reality of what Jesus has done deep down inside of you to the point that every day you awake to righteousness. Awake to Righteousness includes 365 daily devotions accompanied by a master key verse and a scriptural meditation for every day of the year. Get your Awake to Righteousness devotional today. You can order online at our website or give us a call at 502-875-7886.